I'm going to introduce you to a new sim racing philosophy. And it's about getting faster and it's going to be about the Austin Martin. This idea, what I'm talking about, I'm calling it front grip overhead. So we create to get faster in the Austin Martin on Spa. We need to go from a safe setup that we can drive using harsh and, and like not perfect inputs all the way up to level five setup where we actually need to be really careful and precise with our steering, braking and throttle inputs. I'm gonna show you five laps with all these different setups and where this front grip of the Aston Martin needs to play its role to increase or like decrease your lap time and actually get faster. So don't go like uh, pick all the setups and use them. No, I'm gonna explain every lap how the setup is improving and how it gets more difficult when we progress to the highest level setup. First setup that I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm just using the hot lap mode to make the example. Yeah, if you're practicing and you want to get faster, don't use the hot lap. It's not. I don't, don't recommend it. Just go for the um, free practice, but. For this reason, I'm gonna show you. So the preset, this is basically what I already shared on the channel. It's very safe. The only difference is that the right height on the front is all the way to the minimum. A lot of times this is absolutely optimal for best lap time. Now let me show you. I used the same pressures, tire pressures, pretty high ABS, traction control. Um, Basic values, basically middle of that brake bias, dampers we actually didn't touch. So yeah, let's get into the lab. Okay, here we go. So basically I'm doing this in VR because that gives me the best like bracing line every time. I'm actually really on the limit with this setup. And I'm sorry for the overlay, it's, I see now it's not fully in the screen, but anyways, here, with this safe setup, we actually need to lift in Radion and Arouge a little bit. Because we have so much understeer in this safe setup. The reason why it's a safe setup understeers, if we, we can get away with harsh inputs on the braking and on the steering. Over here as well, I am trail braking over here as well. But this is very stable. I don't have to be really precise with the inputs. But in this corner, I actually needed to lift to get the car into the corner. I'm braking here a, a little bit early, as I can see. And I really need to use the steering wheel to make that car rotate. Over here as well. I really need to like force, release the throttle, use the steering wheel to push that car through the corner. It's also going to be the case here. I need to brake here. We have understeer, understeer. Now I'm going on throttle. And you can see in this corner, I'm running all the way wide because the car just understeers. This is just how a safe setup is built. Although I'm trail braking here, I need to use a lot of steering input to get that nose around these corners. And on this occasion here, this is where the safe setup really hurts you the most in my opinion because you want to be on full throttle here but with this safe setup i actually need to lift it and then that speed you're carrying on all the way on this straight up to blush mall uh, we cannot enjoy this full top speed of the car and over here this corner as well we need to lift because or else we will just go wide and invalidate the lap now over here this is just a little bit straightforward and don't get me wrong this is a great setup for starting out you can really like get a lap time of like a like a low 20 we did a 20 uh, 8 so let's get to the next level if you're plateauing on like a 22 21 lap time then this next level of setup will be a little bit hard to drive but it will be more having more grip on the front so getting into better lap times using a little bit less steering wheel uh, being a little bit more careful on the brakes and i'm going to show you how did this can help you so we uh, increased the ride height with five millimeters 
dampers we kept the same and we decreased a little bit of that bump stop range but makes the tail of the car uh, be a, a bit higher under load when we have top speed and everything so this should help us in the fast corners that the front is actually a more do getting more dominant uh, and we also decreased the brake bias by a few percent actually a lot like three percent so this is gonna also promote the, the front of the car pointing into the corner when we're on the brakes and we kept the same traction control so this is like a good step into the right direction let's look at the lab so there is a little bit of margin in how good I'm driving this line, so that is something to take note of. Now, this corner section would be a bit easier, yeah? I still need to lift, but I already feel the car is rotating a little bit more nicely. And you can see on the Delta, I'm actually improved on Air Rouge and Radion by one tenth of a lap. Now, the next uh, section I actually can use a little bit more of trail braking and I actually don't have to steer so much to push this car through the corners and I can really feel the improvement here and actually improving the lap by two tenths here braking also here trail braking I still need to use the steering wheel a lot a lot more than I would want to but and in this section I'm not really sure but this like every corner I'm just improving on lap time now if you went from the f last setup to this one and you're not improving immediately that is actually very explainable because these setups are actually too easy for me and but i just wanted to explain you how this setup is now behaving in a way that we can get some more lap time out of it because i can really push that nose of the car with like a little bit less brake bias with a little bit more right height and a little bit less bump stop range on the rear and this should help us in this corner as well still need to lift a little bit and we're up six tenths in our lap time yeah and this is actually for my driving i don't really feel if this is going to be like if i'm actually driving this perfectly and i still need to lift here in that plasimo corner but i had to lift a lot less than in that first uh, lap we did now here the bus stop chicane it's just overall behaving better over there actually screwing up a little bit this corner so we increased seven tenths of lap time and we're actually getting almost into the 219s let's get to the next level of setup next level of setup this is the level two like the third lap we're gonna do and what's happening here we increasing again five millimeters of that rear right height dampers we keep the same and we decrease the brake bias even more we increase the bump stop ranges this is gonna allow the car to push more downwards under pressure so this will increase again more dominance on the nose and we actually going to create a little bit of that front grip overhead what we are looking for and the same goes for the bump stop range we even making this a bit smaller as well so that rear end of the car will again be a bit more higher which will be it will get more nervous on the rear end of the car and we also getting rid of some traction control and abs at the same time so this would increase our on throttle behavior and it will increase our braking behavior so we can go later on the brakes and we have more rotation on brakes and we're probably going to have more rotation on throttle as well now if i put people in my rig for the first time and i give them this setup they spin guaranteed so this comes with more skill let's look at the lap okay lap number three and we have actually uh, a little bit more biting setup on that front end so we're gonna have some front grip overhead and we need to start thinking about using the weight transfer of the car to make this car rotate into the corners especially under braking our rules and radion we can now take full throttle because that rear end of the car is even higher and the front's getting more dominant 
important to note is that we cannot use harsh inputs anymore we need to actually get more precise on our roost and run now over here i'm pushing the brakes and i'm gently steering into the corner i'm actually allowing this front end to like gently go into that corner because if i use harsh inputs i'm gonna oversteer in these corner entries and over here as well because i have more grip on the front i can actually carry more speed into this hairpin corner actually making me a lot faster but this car is getting more nervous and it's gonna be more playful on the rear and over here we have we need to be again very gentle with that steering input and the braking and this is actually when i talk about this front grip overhead you know in these corners we need to be really careful with the steering input because we have so much grip on the front we cannot just slam it into the corners anymore because then we will just oversteer over here as well it's nicely rotating the lap time is actually going down again and i don't have to use that much steering input i still need to use steering input, <coughs> input here i'm just need to lift a little bit but we're six tenths up and that's the biggest difference now i don't have to rely on my steering so much to rotate the car into and out of these corners what about this corner could we uh, still needed to lift a little bit just to be on the safe side but again it's faster than in that previous lap we're improving lap time now over here we make a very nice bus stop chicane so we're getting extra two tenths in that lap as well because this car is just want to go into these corners that's our first 219.3 getting up to some serious setups at least uh this is gonna be my limit uh, maybe there are people faster it's uh really uh it's just what i wanted to share um we go back to that arrow and i just pushed another five millimeters on that rear right height so now we're gonna have actually some difference dampers we didn't touch and i actually took off again i took off a lot a few clicks of that bump stop range so the car is from baseline higher and when it's under load it's gonna be higher as well and the front bump stop range i increased as well so we're getting more roll the, the front springs will be moving more inwards which makes the car even more grippier on the front and we decrease the brake bias again with a few clicks making it again more rotating into corners because i want to use more of this brake and throttle behavior to manipulate this behavior in corners uh <clears throat> traction control and abs we push down again now we really need to be careful on the brakes and on the steering and on the throttle because these these pedals are going to be more dominant and more dominant as we go and tires wise we also got some negative though so this means the rear tires will open up a little bit will also increase more rotation so you can see like a trend here yeah we want more rotation we're making that rear end of the car so playful so we can use this front tires to get faster into these corners now we're gonna look at the delta again in this fourth lap let's go all right lap number four uh, let's have a look i'm actually nailing this corner perfectly and i'm having a hard time in the fifth lap to replicate this but yeah let's go now this setup is actually allowing massive rotation on aradeon and our so we have no issues here and we need to be more careful on the steering input because if we push it too much then it starts sliding now the austin doesn't really have a hard time uh, with this so uh yeah first uh corner section again i i really need to be careful here and i can really speed it up now as well so you can also really see i made a small correction because that rear is sliding more and more so that actually cost me a few like a tenth or something and over here as well this hairpin corner now i can carry even more speed into this corner and this corner gets harder with this setup uh because we have so much grip now on the front we have so much uh in some corners we have so much more grip than we actually need 
for this corner as well with high speed this front end is just getting more dominant and it's ne still now i'm actually using a lot less steering input uh, which makes in my opinion this is just not a case of now i'm driving faster and now i'm like scrubbing the tires more no i'm using the weight of the car better in this way so every time i'm on the brake or on the throttle these wheels aren't scrubbing more there's just the, the pressure on it is just better balanced like this to squeeze out more lap time now we're actually in the 218s now and this last corner we could actually fly off full throttle and this uh, uh this top corner as well very easily we have so much grip on the front we don't have to lift anymore so you can see that's also increasing our delta and because of the brake bias going all the way to the back and decreasing abs we can actually get later on the brakes and we have a full second here so boom up to that last level now i'm not gonna lie i actually had to do this lap a few times to improve again this level 3 setup, that is actually something I would go for. And this level 4 setup is actually a very challenging setup for me as well. But I just know there is more lap time in this one. So I just like tried a few laps and I was actually uh, in, uh, like improved my lap time here as well. What I also want to mention, if you made it this far into the video, please hit that like button. That would be much appreciated. And I also want you to note that this is years of experience from level one, two, three, four. Don't expect to change, like go to these levels in like a few days. You know, that, that, that's not realistic. That's not, and if you can do well, kudos for you. But this takes a lot of time. But I just wanted to show you how I attack this, you know? And maybe let me know in the comments uh, because this is just Aston Martin specific. This is how I like to set up this car. But other cars need different things, need different things to get that rotation in the car, make that front more dominant. Let's go to that fifth lap and then we're gonna wrap it up. But watch it fully, yeah, because there's small details that we, but because we're still improving lap time. And obviously, I'm totally forgetting what we need to change on the setup. So I'm keeping, I'm sticking with this right height for now. You can even push this farther. You could, but I didn't. I did something else. So bumps we didn't change. Uh, what we did is we increased that front bump stop range even more. So we're getting like 13 over here. And I decreased the brake bias a bit more. And I got a little bit less anti-roll bar because I was still feeling when, why do I change this anti-roll bar? This is all about entry and momentum. Um, I want to explain if you put this on zero, you get a massive run up on how fast your car will go into that corner. If you put this on zero, it's uncontrollable. So I put this on five to get that ish initial turn in even more. And obviously we still have that traction control on ABS. And I pushed like two clicks of that rear toe as well. So now we get like this. This is a very challenging setup for me. And uh, I need to work with this. Uh, th this setup I'm going to drive for weeks maybe before I can think about like getting even more ride height or whatever let's go to the lab okay this is gonna be the last one and uh yeah i'm not gonna lie i had to redo this lap a few times to like improve upon uh, this fourth corner i'm actually gaining a lot of time again and like i really need to be careful now on the steering inputs over here but uh yeah so and the thing is if you oversteer when you go fast you start sliding again with the rears and you lose lap time again so it gets really sensitive on like a straight line as well over here i can carry much so much speed in these corners and this front is just like pointing to where i want it to go and i'm like yeah so this corner as well let's see if we're improving here yep we do and 
this corner gets very hard because you really need to be sensible with steering input and this next Puhan corner because it's so dominant now on the front we need to really be careful you can actually see that the car is going to the side I'm braking and the steering wheel is still straight so it just gets more and more aggressive basically and real pros they go even farther than me you know I'm just I'm, I'm doing this a few hours a week and but I really wanted to show you how you can like get into different levels of setups and let me know in the comments over here as well just full throttle yeah on the limit though so let me know in the comments uh, if you want to see this for other cars now this videos take a long time to make but uh, yeah maybe you can vote or leave some tips uh, on the PayPal whatever and then I will get like into this because uh, yeah and this is just spy you know in other tracks we need different things so there's there's a lot that goes into it but I just wanted to show you like how you can do it how you can make setups and go faster using them and I want to thank you the supporters of the channel supporting me so I can make more videos like this one Thank you guys and see you in the next video. And by the way, if you really want to build your own sim rig, watch this video next.